I want to show you how you can maximize your time as a software engineer using what I call the three pillars. These three pillars are the same exact ones that helped me transform myself from just a regular six figure per year software engineer to seven figures per year entrepreneur. You can see just in the last month alone, my business brought in almost $220,000 in revenue. And today we did $22,000 in net volume. Of course, there's a lot more that went into it than just these three pillars for productivity, but these were a very big component that made me transform from six figures to seven figures. Let's get straight into it and talk about what the three pillars actually are. First and foremost, first pillar, time acquisition. More so, how to get your time back, right? How to get more time back to actually spend it on what you need to spend it on. The second pillar, time allocation. How to properly allocate the time that you actually got back into higher leverage activities. And last but not least, time systemization. To help you systemize acquisition and allocation to save you even more time in the long run. And many people think that they don't have enough time because they have so much to do, right? They have their job, they have to come home, they have other responsibilities, they have a family, kids to take care of, and everybody has the same exact line, right? They're too busy. But let me show you some scary statistics. A person wastes on average 26 out of the 365 days in a year. And this does not include the two and a half hours the average person wastes on social media, the one hour they waste on unproductive meetings per day, that is, and the one and a half hours of initial screen time that they waste per day. And this doesn't even count the time spent on low leverage activities that don't give you nearly as much in return, right? And all of that combined, you can be sure that it's a lot more than the 26 days out of the year. I would even argue that it's probably over 100 days out of the year that the regular person just wastes. But for us to understand how to get our time back, we have to first understand why are we wasting so much time? Studies show that over 40% of our waking hours are spent on social media and streaming services. This is because social media platforms spend billions of dollars on marketing and advanced algorithms to maximize their user engagement. And they use various machine learning algorithms to personalize content feeds, making it extremely difficult for users to actually stop scrolling. And this is actually known as doom scrolling, you might be familiar with. And if we actually reduce our time on these activities, then we can reclaim a lot of hours for our productivity and more meaningful activities. So let's talk about how we can do that. The first step in getting your time back is actually by setting standards. You see, standards help you identify what truly matters and they filter out distractions. They serve as a guideline for how you should spend your time. And by having standards, you actually create boundaries that protect your focus and also reduce decision fatigue. They help you say no to requests that don't align with your goals, freeing up a lot more time for more meaningful work. And personally, these are my standards that I hold myself to. First and foremost, I deleted all social media apps from my phone. I don't have any social media apps, not even YouTube. The only thing that I have on my phone is YouTube music that I use from time to time to listen to songs when I'm in the car or to listen to a podcast if I'm going on a long ride, right? But that is the only app on my phone outside of WhatsApp and just messaging apps. There are no social media apps whatsoever. And we will talk about consuming content in the next pillar. But for now, I would recommend you delete all social media from your phone, especially if you are not creating content. If you're only consuming content, I would delete everything from your phone and have your phone for only three purposes. To call somebody, to text somebody, or to search something on Google. The second standard that I set for myself is to say no more often. More specifically, say no to opportunities that will not give me the ROI that I'm going to put into it. This also accounts for activities where you might fear missing out on, be it a party, be it a gathering, whatever the case. You need to set strict standards, whether it's for business, whether it's for personal leisure time, to say no to things. And many people fear that they'll miss out on something, but you need to understand that every no is a yes to something that actually matters and something that will actually give you more ROI for the future. And last but not least, you need to simplify your day-to-day -day life. The fewer decisions that you need to make throughout the day, the more energy you will save. A lot of people have too much complexity in their day-to-day. -day. They're thinking about what are they gonna eat? They're thinking about what are they gonna wear? and so many things. You can start by just simplifying the essentials, what you're gonna wear and what you're gonna eat. For example, I know what I'm gonna eat the next day, I have all my meals planned out. If it's gonna be a day where I'll have the chef over to make me something, then that's exactly what I'll have. It will be completely up to the chef to make me something. If it's gonna be a day where I'm gonna be ordering something, I'll order it either the day before or even two days prior and I'll have it ready for that day. I will never make an eating decision the day 
oh, very rarely does this happen, only when I'm maybe on a trip, whatever the case. But if I'm in my regular just 24-hour day, I know everything that I'm going to eat the day before or even two days prior. If you have any in-person meetings or you're going to go somewhere to an event or whatever the case, you need to have all the stuff that you're going to wear set out beforehand such that you don't spend any extra energy the day of finding what you're going to wear. And now let's move on to time allocation because now that we have all this free time, we need to know how we allocate it. And to allocate it properly, we have to understand how a capacitor actually works. And if you're not familiar with a capacitor, it's similar to a battery except it has less storage and it actually charges and discharges much faster. And the reason we need to learn about the capacitor is because human energy actually resembles a capacitor more than a battery. Let me explain. This means that we should actually allocate our time in a way that actually aligns with the capacitor's nature rather than that of a battery. Many people allocate their time as if they are a battery and not a capacitor because our energy can be rapidly replenished and discharged, which means that we're most effective during short bursts of intense focus or effort. And because our energy reserves are so limited, we need regular recharges to restore our capacity when depleted. So our day should be prioritized from high leverage to low leverage activities. When we wake up, we're at full charge. We have the most energy, making it the ideal time to tackle our most important high impact tasks with maximum focus and effort such that we can get the most out of our time, the highest ROI. And as the day progresses and our energy depletes, we should gradually shift to less demanding activities, living routine or administrative tasks for the end of the day when we have less capacity for deep focused work. Meaning, for example, what you're gonna eat the next day, what you're gonna wear the next day, or whatever meetings you're gonna have the next day, or whatever you need to plan for the next day, you do that at the end of your day, right? Because now you have less energy and you can spend that less energy on lower energy required items, such as what you're gonna eat and what you're gonna wear for the next day. And we must also remember, always remember the power of simplicity. Many people use multiple tools, right? Calendars, notebooks, digital planners, notion documents to manage their time, but they forget that each of these things requires energy to maintain them and continuously work on them. My rule is that I keep it simple. I only track one thing, meetings. The entire reason for why I started a business were for freedom. And what freedom is there in me tracking every single little detail of my life on a calendar like a robot? That's not freedom to me, right? Thus, the only thing that I track are meetings, because most often than not, these are the highest ROI tasks that I'll be doing. I can spend 30 minutes on a meeting and make hundreds of thousands of dollars. You can't really do that with anything else, because once again, the highest leverage activities will always involve other human beings. Thus, that's the only thing on my calendar, because that's the most important thing that should be on my calendar. Everything else, all the other administrative tasks, whatever it be, it's all in here. And more specifically, I actually keep a mental note the night before of what I'm going to be doing the next day. And I prioritize everything from highest leverage to the lowest. So the night before, I'll take a look at my calendar and I'll see how many meetings I have the next day. And I'll essentially, right then and there, within a couple seconds, decide how many day will look like based on those meetings. What activities I'll be doing before the meeting and what activities I'll be doing after the meeting. I keep things simple because at the whim of things, I might need to travel, I might need to go somewhere, I might need to meet somebody important. doesn't really matter, right? I just need to have the freedom to act on these things. That's why I keep things simple. And I also set extremely strict standards on how I allocate my time, just as I do for how I acquire it. I follow a strict 5 to 1 creation to consumption ratio, meaning that for every minute of content that I consume, I must create for 5 minutes. And this approach is why I avoid social media entirely, and I'm highly selective about the content that I actually do consume. More specifically, I don't consume any entertainment content. All the content that I consume is strictly educational. And even if there's a hint of entertainment in it, it's largely educational. I don't watch a lot of movies. I don't watch a lot of YouTube, only very specific educational things that I watch. I don't particularly use Instagram, or Twitter, nothing of that sort. Main reason being is because if I'm not creating content on there, then I don't need to consume content for now. And as software engineers, we have to understand that we are exposed to a lot more screen time than the regular person. That's why it's imperative for all of us to actually take time away from the screen brainstorming, right? Being creative about things. And I spend at least one hour a day just thinking. Some prefer to do it in bed shortly after waking up. Some prefer to do it while walking. I personally do it when walking or going for a light run, right? but you need to allocate some time to your day for thinking. Why, you might ask? Well, because without actually time dedicated to thinking, you will lose out on a lot of high-leveraged opportunities. 
because leverage actually comes from thinking of specific opportunities and ways you can approach problems. And now that we know how to get our time back and how to actually spend it, we need to figure out a way to systemize it. Or specifically, we need to identify any tasks that we do frequently and develop systems or workflows for them. So these are known as standard operating procedures, right? And we also need to automate everything that doesn't require your direct involvement in it. And last but not least, you need to group similar tasks and tackle them in one focused session. For example, if you're going to be responding to emails, then just set up a blog for responding to all your emails. If you're going to be checking text, then set up a blog to respond to all your texts. If you're going to be taking meetings, right, then set up a blog to take all your meetings in a row. Ideally, this is not always going to be the case because life happens. But if you're going to do things, try to do them in blogs to prevent your other activities from being mumbled together. And that is, in as short a time as possible, my entire productivity method from A to Z. And the three pillars that you need to be conscious of to actually get ahead from everybody else. I hope this video was helpful. As always, thank you for watching.